All right, you are welcome to today's webinar. I will take you to a website I've taken you before. All right, this is a coin market cap. This site is very, very useful if you know how to use it. Very, very useful if you really know how to use it. I wouldn't give you full overview of this of this uh, website now because I have limited time. Okay, now this is an aggregate website. All right, this site gives you indexed list of cryptocurrency exchanges, information about these coins, coin market capitalization, the prices of this coin, the percentage in gain and the percentage in loss, and exchanges where you will buy them. Just mention it, it equally gives you overview of the total money in the crypto space, okay? Which I pointed out last time, but I will just point it out again. Now, this is the total amount of coin that is existing, which is 8,795 cryptocurrencies existing in the world as of today that I'm speaking to you. Then we have market, we have 36,346 cryptocurrency market existing. That is exchanges, anything, anywhere people buy and sell crypto, okay? That is regarded as market, total of 36,346 of them is already existing. Then we have, we have market cap, okay? This is market capitalization of crypto space, which is, $1.8 trillion, okay? This is $1.8 trillion and the crypto space moved from almost $900 billion to $1 trillion from uh, December, this from December 2020 and January 2021, it skyrocketed. You can see how it moved and you see the amount of money people have pumped into the space since then. Then 24 hours volume, Sorry about that. 24 hours volume. This is this is the amount of money people has buy into crypto for the last 24 hours, which is 142 billion dollars. Now you can see that you can take part in the share of this money. You can see this is a trillion dollar industry. All right? And there is a lot of money to be made here. You can take part and share this money I'm mentioning here by just trading and investing in this space. This is what more than any business you can ever think of. And it doesn't take, it doesn't require much from you. It just requires you putting, on, putting money there and relaxing, taking the money out at the appropriate time. And that is just all. Then this is, Dominance, okay, this is BTC and Ethereum dominance. BTC is having 61.8 dominance. It means, this dominance means that in this total of $1.8 trillion, BTC is occupying 61.8% of this amount. So what it means is that most of this money that has been traded into crypto space, we are traded into BTC, okay? <clears throat> you can see for BTC alone to take this means you should have respect for this coin. They call it Bitcoin because it has passed through, it has passed a lot of tests to be where it is today. Okay, so that is for the upper section. I wouldn't go further than that. Then it's very, very easy to do fundamental analysis. Now, what is fundamental analysis? Fundamental analysis is just you finding out fundamentals, finding out basic information about the crypto assets you want to trade or you want to buy or you want to invest in. Now, what are you looking for? You are looking for information that will prove you, that will prove to you that this coin is worth investing in. This coin will stay the test of time. This coin will be there. My money will not just vanish. Now, I don't know if any of you here participated in BitConnect. BitConnect was one of the greatest, uh, will I say it's Ponzi scheme in crypto space. They created a coin, you earn some dividend as you buy the coin 
and all that. And all of a sudden, the, the project vanished into thin air. Okay? If you are having the coin or anything, you can't even sell because the coin is not listed in the exchange. All right? So if you did pure fundamental analysis on BitConnect, you could have been able to find out that BitConnect was not a stable project. All right? Then BitConnect has equally launched now, maybe they might have advertised it to you, they launched now and calling themselves EtherConnect. So you might have seen Ether Connect going around the space. It's the same set of people. And this is just a high yield investment program that they are launching, promising you a coin and you get extra percentage. Now, if you know how to do fundamental analysis, you'll be able to figure out all this stuff. Okay? So what is fundamental analysis? Like I said, it's finding out basic information that proves to you that a coin is what investing in and this coin is stand the best of time. In fact, the simple truth is you're just trying to discover that a coin is legit to avoid you buying into a scam product, a scam coin. A lot of scammers, Indians, Pakistan, Chinese, they create nonsense, nonsense coins. And when they create these coins, they promise you, they promise that the coin price will skyrocket and people will keep buying the coin. Now, let me enlighten you small. The coin they created, they have this coin because they are the developers, they have it in large quantity, okay? Now, when they advertise it to you and you buy into this coin, when you buy into it, as investors are coming into it, those investors are giving this coin a value, all right? Now, immediately they start giving it a value. The owners, because they don't have a, clear, a, a clean heart, for this project, they will start selling off these coins. Selling it off, claiming your money, they will be selling it off and collecting a, a good coin that has a value. They might be collecting your Ethereum, they might be collecting your uh, BTC, claiming they are giving you a coin that will increase tomorrow. Now, at the end, they will not list this coin in the exchange, they will not back this coin up and they will vanish into thin air. Now you have acquired a useless asset. An asset you cannot sell, an asset you cannot exchange to anything. <laughs> how happy would you be? <laughs> I ask again, how happy would you be? You'd be so angry. You've thrown your money inside a pit. Okay, so that is why you need fundamental analysis. Most of the times we are too carried away with uh, technical analysis. You want to reach out, you want to reach out. But I want you to understand that the full reading technical chart you need other things. You need to understand a lot of things, okay? And technical analysis is just you trying to analyze the market based on past activities that has happened. But fundamental analysis gives you that overview and opportunity to discover a potential coin, to discover a real, a real coin that you will buy and in the next one more, two months, you invested into that coin, it will double your money. Fundamental analysis has that ability. Why technical analysis is just for you to analyze the market, to see what happened in this market previously. In fact, let me be honest with you. If you're an investor, majorly investors don't need technical analysis. People that really need technical analysis are people that they trade day to day. They want to buy today. They want to sell tomorrow and make more money and all that. Those are the people that need technical analysis. But yet, so if you understand fundamental and you do fundamental analysis in some coins, you can still achieve that same result of buying a coin today and selling it tomorrow and next with a great gain and profit. All right? Now, I will show you how to do fundamental analysis here on a coin. So when you come in CoinMarketCap, the website is coinmarketcap.com, all right? So when you come on CoinMarketCap, normally you see this, this is the very first page, is filled with list of coins. They always give you the first top 100 coins and they are ranking, BTC is always the number one, okay? Here you see the name of the coin. Here you see the price of the coin. You see the 24 hours in gain or in loss. You see the seven days gain or in loss. You see the total market cap. This total market cap 
is the total amount of money that has been traded into Bitcoin since Bitcoin got into the space. It's written in trillion, okay? Then this is volume, all right? This 24, this 24 hours volume is the total amount of money people has traded into BTC for the last 24 hours. Okay, then this is the circulating supply. The circulating supply is the total amount of BTC in circulation. BTC has just 21 million total supply. And currently, miners has been able to mine 18.6 million of BTC. So it simply means that almost 89% of Bitcoin is already in circulation. So very soon, all the Bitcoin will be in circulation. So these are tangible information you need to find in any of these coins. You see the price, what am I not saying? Bitcoin is even $60,000 as we speak. So if you click on Bitcoin now on CoinMarketCap, it gives you, you come to this page. This is an index page. You see the name of this coin. Okay, you see their websites, you see a sprawler. This sprawler has to do with their uh, blockchain view. Then community will always have to be Bitcoin talk or Reddit, a social media they use, okay, to communicate to people. And um, bitcointalk.org is original cryptocurrency forum created by Satoshi Nakamoto from the day they started Bitcoin projects today and that is the biggest cryptocurrency forum in the world anybody in the world that is in crypto space should know bitcoin talk then by the right corner here you see the price of the coin you see how many percent it has done for the last 24 hours okay so now how do you do fundamental analysis it's very simple you find out what is this coin all about? What is he into? Who are those behind this coin? That is what we are finding out. What is the roadmap of this coin? The roadmap means what are they trying to achieve? Now, what is the use cases of this coin? The use case I'm talking about is what is this coin used for? Because the use case will determine how often people will need this coin? How well people want to buy this coin? What this coin will be used for? Each of the cryptocurrency you see in the market has a use case, okay? Bitcoin is just made to be used as payment, okay? Ethereum is made to be used as gas fee for transactions in smart contracts, decentralized finance. The same thing with Tron, okay? Zcash is a coin that is created for privacy. So all these coins you see, they have their use cases. Now, each use cases of this coin determines how this coin will moon. Now, when I mean moon, I mean the coin rising to a very high price, okay? So these are crypto terms that you get used to as time goes on. So when you come to coin market cap, you just search a coin, okay? Let me go back so that I will start afresh. Aside picking a coin here, you can come here. You can come to this search bar and type any coin you want. If I type BTC, you see it has shown me BTC. I'll click on BTC and it gives me this page, okay? So you can search for any coin you want. Then if you come here for your fundamental analysis, you click on the website and go to the website of that coin. That is how you do your fundamental analysis. Why are you going to the website? You want to go and read more about that coin. You want to know those behind this coin, okay? Then, while we are waiting for the website to load, if you come back here, make sure you read white paper of each of these cryptocurrency you are investing in, okay? To know the aim and the purpose of this coin. All right, the white paper, every cryptocurrency has white paper. The white paper shows you what they are trying to achieve with that coin. Okay, that is what the white paper does. Now this is Bitcoin official website. All right, so when you come here, Bitcoin now, you, can, you might not really see their own team, 
because Bitcoin is anonymous. You might not really see their own team, but right here you can see white paper, you see a lot of information, you see their developers, you see exchanges, you take your time <clears throat> to go through it. Let me look for a coin that will have a team. Let me look for, okay, let me look for Ethereum, ETH. Okay, let me check, Ethereum supposed to have a team. So you go to Ethereum official website. When you come to Ethereum official website, first you read through the site and see what they are into. Okay, you can see Ethereum is the community run technology powering the cryptocurrency ETA and thousands of decentralized applications. This alone has stated the purpose which Ethereum was created. So you, from this, you can then understand that Ethereum was not actually made as means of payment. Ethereum was made to serve, okay, as a powering engine for decentralized applications, all right? Then you can continue reading, reading, reading. This is something you do on your own. If I start going through this, we will not live here today. You take your time, go through all this, okay? Then you come about us and check some, some of them, you see team, some you see about us, like Ethereum now, we are seeing about us. You click on about us, you see their vision, what are they trying to achieve, their core principle, their roadmap, their roadmap tells you what these people are trying to achieve and at which time they want to achieve such goals. Those things determine what will happen and how investors will invest in that coin, okay? So a lot of information you will get here when you come to their website, okay? I'm actually looking for Ethereum team. Although Ethereum team is vastly known, but I believe if you take your time now and go, let me just quickly look for a little coin that I will see their team so that you understand what I'm saying. In Ethereum case, you can take your time and go through it. Let me check for, okay, let me check for dots, which is poker dots. Then let's visit their website. Now this is poker dots. Then, Mm. Let's look for their team. Polkadot, 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 community, branding, roadmap, about. Let's see if their team information is good. You can see the faces of people behind this project. Okay. Now, any, any scammer will never put his real face here is not possible, okay? Sometimes they might end up putting a face, but to further your fundamental analysis, okay? You follow these people on Twitter. <clears throat> Every cryptocurrency have a Twitter handle. You follow these people on Twitter to see their latest updates and what they are doing and what they are into, then you equally, some of them have videos with their team. You can see this is their official uh, Instagram, uh, sorry, Twitter handle. A lot of information and any promo or any new development they have, it will always be shared here. Now, once you have come to this place, you take your time, go through what they have been doing on Twitter, people's comments, what they've been all about, what have people been talking about these people, okay? Then you can equally, even through this uh, Twitter, you can get across to getting some videos about them, all right? Knowing more about these people, you can simply go to YouTube sometimes. <clears throat> if you want to clear your doubts about the team and search for poker dots, <clears throat> If you search for polka dots, then you can see some good, good information here. Okay, this is one of polka dots team members. So that alone is showing you that this project has a face. Okay, it's not anyhow project that people create, they tell you stories. And be very mindful, 
Sometimes people end up, sometimes people end up just creating nonsense, nonsense videos, all those promotional videos that are saying, they will be writing, they tell you this and that. Sometimes they go to the extreme of paying freelancers to speak about them. But how you will know about, okay, you can see Pokado behind the code. This is one of the team members explaining what they have been doing for Polkadot. Now, this is not a scammer. A scammer will not risk his life showing you his face and trying to tell you what they have next. So this is just as simple as that. Just try to find out how legit these people are. That is what is called fundamental analysis. Okay? And with that fundamental analysis, you can be very sure that a coin you have analyzed and you check that coin, the price is still very low, and you have been able to identify the use cases what this coin will be used for. You can tell, tell somebody that, I want to buy this coin and hold it, because this coin is so so and so, and this coin, they, their aim is to, be, uh, is to achieve so so and so. And I believe that in the next one month, if they should launch so so projects you discover from their roadmap, you will be, the coin price will skyrocket, okay? So that is as simple as that. Then, if you come down, you equally check the market, okay? If you come down on coin market cap, we are back in coin market cap now, don't get confused, okay? If you come back on coin market cap and go down, you see polka dot market. You get to see how many exchange that are already trading on this coin. The more the exchanges, the more stable this coin is for you to invest in it for a long term. It's as simple as that. Because if all this exchange, more than 100 exchange is trading on this coin, then what are you waiting for? What else do you need to know that this coin is highly potential for you to hold? Okay? So it's as simple as that. Just it takes your diligence of keeping your, like taking your time to analyze a coin you want to invest in. Then there is another cool feature about coin market cap. I will show you now. <clears throat> I will show it to you with a warning so that you know what you are doing. Now, if you come in CoinMarketCap and you click on these cryptocurrencies, you are going to see recently added, okay? When you click on recently added, you will see new, new cryptocurrency that just got listed on CoinMarketCap. Some of these coins might not be more than one month they launch them, okay? This is where you can equally get another potential coin that the price is still very, very low that in the next one week or two weeks, it might increase. Okay, so when you come here, you equally be very, very careful. <laughs> Remember, you have to analyze the coin very well and find out about the team. You have to be very, very careful. Don't use because it's a new coin and you dive into it, you might end up buying a scam coin. And at the end, your money is vanished. You can see that <laughs> just 24 hours volume of this coin is just 2,870 something dollars. Now imagine if you analyze this coin and this coin is highly potential and a stable project, okay? It's very simple for you. You can buy it and within a short while, you might make 100% out of this coin. You can see the price is still very low, okay? But don't misunderstand me and don't quote me wrongly do your analysis vividly and make sure that the coin you are investing in is worth it. If it doesn't worth it, please keep your money and wait for a good project that you will invest in, okay? Don't be in a haste because it's a new coin, you dive into it because you see the price. So that is why I'm taking my time to explain this thing and send it as a warning, do not rush into a project because it's new and the price is very low, do your normal research and ensure that you have ascertained real sustainability features in these coins before you buy them. So this is just basically how you can analyze your coin. Coin market cap has a lot. You can take your time to explore this website, okay? And do more findings and everything you want. This, they were recently bought by Binance. So Binance is the owner of this website now, but I think CoinMarketCap should be older than Binance, but Binance acquired it recently and they are now product of Binance. But meanwhile, this is a very nice tool in your hand. 
from here, you can get a coin that will make you super, super, super gains. All right? So with that being said, I will be moving over to Binance. I will move over to Binance. Let's conclude our kind of orders so that you ask your question and off we go for today. So crypto is so sweet and at the same time it needs your focus and persistence. It's not something you will start doing today and tomorrow you dump it and next tomorrow you come back this space. This is just like, this is a technological concept, okay? And it keeps developing. The moment you abandon it, before you go and come back in the next one month, a lot has changed and you become a novice entirely. As simple as that. Now, you already know Binance. I've given you an uh, overview of Binance. You will not know Binance if this is your first time in my class. So when, when I come to trade section, I normally use the advanced trade section. And normally for I, for my sites, I use that, I use that background a lot. Now, <coughs> This is Binance, like you know, I explain market order. If you look by the left, right corner, you see where you see buy and you see sell, all right? Now I explained market order and I explained the limit order last time. This time around, I will take them again. Then I will teach you stop loss and I will teach you OCO. So pay close attention. Now, market order, like I said previously, market order is a kind of order that you put into the market and it's being executed with the current market price, okay? So if I'm executing market order, if I want to buy this Bitcoin now with market order, what I'm telling this exchange is buy this coin for me at the current market price. Now, if I'm buying this coin, maybe I'm buying 1,000 Bitcoin, okay? If I'm buying 1,000 Bitcoin now, 1,000 Bitcoin in this exchange, it will start buying 1,000 Bitcoin with the current price. And even as the price is increasing, it will be buying with the current price because I'm using market order. That is why it's market order. It will always buy at the price of the market. If the price start falling, it will continue buying that till it buys the quantity I want, okay? But if my quantity is small, it will just execute immediately with the current market price. But if I'm buying even if up to 1 million Bitcoin, it will, if the price is increasing, it will continue buying at mm. any price the coin is at the moment, okay? So that is market order and market order, the disadvantage in market order is Binance charge more in market order. Now, now I'll explain to you why Binance charge more in market order. That is what we, we call maker and taker fees. I hope some of us have notes. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, but please, you should have one. That's what we call maker and taker fees. Maker fees, okay, let me start with taker fees. Taker fees is fees you pay when you take the market. How do you take the market? If you come in this exchange now and you buy this coin at this current price, Binance charge you higher for taking this price because this price you've taken, you have stressed this exchange engine to quickly execute your transaction at this current price, which means it's going to forget every other person's transaction and start executing yours. So that is what happens when you are using market order. Now, when you make a trade, how do you make a trade? Bitcoin is at the current price of $61,000 plus. And I come here now and I put, I want to buy Bitcoin at $55,000. Now I have created a conflict in the market because I have told the people that is selling $61,000 know that I have only $55,000 to buy. So what is going to happen is, if just imagine if it's only two 
maybe one buyer and one seller, and the seller is selling $61,000, and you want to buy $55,000, that seller will wait longer. So of you will continue negotiating. And at that, you are helping the exchange maintain a balance in the price of this coin. So that is why you are known as a maker when you bid a price. And when you bid that price, Binance charge you lower. Okay, I want you to understand that most exchanges, the same thing with Luno. In fact, maker fees are free. Maker, when you make a trade, you trade free. Just that in Binance, you have different levels to reach before you, you start trading free as a maker. But in exchange like Luno, maker fees is zero once you make a trade. Okay, so that is why market order will charge you more than a limit order. Now we'll go over to limit order. I will explain this limit order again. Now, limit order is a kind of order where you have the opportunity to decide on the price you want to buy this coin. Remember that in market order, you don't have a chance to pick the price. The market pick the price for you. It's pick the current market price. But in limit order, you decide the price you want to buy. Okay? It's your choice. And why it's called limit order is that that price you decide must be met. Example, this coin is $61,000. If I put, I want to buy this coin at $50,000 now, okay? And I want to buy one BTC. Now, I want to buy one BTC at uh, $50,000. Now, what is going to happen is if I place this order, this order will remain and it will never execute. The Bitcoin will get to $50,000 and it will execute for me because that is a limit order and because I have that opportunity to decide on the price I want to buy, all right? So that is a limit order, your price must be met, okay? Now, maybe I want to buy so quickly, I can simply, I can simply just use 61,000, maybe use 100 because I can see it's keep going up and coming down. So it's very likely that it might meet this price within the next 10, 20 minutes. But if I really need to buy it immediately, what I will do is I will do this is 1,200 and maybe I'll put 260. This is around two, it's keep going from two, okay? You can see that even I, I place this order and this order will execute because this price keep going up and coming down. So if I really need to use this limit order and buy immediately, that is how I will fix my price according to the current market price and it will execute immediately or I take someone's price by clicking on each of these, any of this order. Any of this order I click on, the price gets filled in for me. So that is a limit order. Now you have understood how I have taught you market order and I have taught you a limit order. Now I will teach you a stop limit order. Now a limit order is an advanced market order. A stop limit order is an advanced limit order. Now, limit, stop limit order is very, very simple. If you understand limit order, then stop limit order is very, very little. Now, I will show you that with a coin I have here in this particular account. I have just big. I will show you again with big because it's a coin I have here. Now, once you come on the buy session, you select stop limit. Before I proceed, stop limit is a risk management kind of order. I repeat, stop limit is a risk management kind of order. This is a kind of order you set to limit your losses in the market, okay? Most of the times is majorly used on the selling section, not on the buying section. But I will explain the two for you so that you will fully understand. Now, this is stop limit. First of all, you have the field here, which it indicates stop. Please, uh, if you are on mobile device, you can zoom in on this. If you are not seeing it clearly, you can zoom in and position this section of buy and sell in your screen. So I believe your Zoom can do that. Zoom on mobile can zoom in on the image so that you can see clearly what is happening on the screen. So here where you have stop, you have a field known as stop and you have another field as limit and you have another field as amount and you have another field as 
total. Now, let me go back to limit order for you to see something. The only additional added field in this top limit is this top. If you go to limit order, you'll find out that you have price, you have amount, and you have total, which is three fields. Now, when you go to stop limit, they become four. You will now have stop, you have limit, you have amount, and you have total. So <clears throat> now, how do this thing work? A stop, this place you see stop, is a trigger condition. A trigger condition, it simply means that any price you put here is the price the, this coin will get to and your order will be pushed into the order book for execution. This condition must be met. For example, <clears throat> this coin is at $1.1 right now, and I want to buy it. Maybe when it's at, uh, let's say 0 0.5, okay? So I can easily, if I want to buy it with limits, stop limit. So what I'm going to do is I will put, is at 1.1, maybe I want to buy it when it's exactly at $1, okay? So I can do 1.05, okay? Since it's at 1.1, it's at 1.05, okay? Or since it's at one, I'll just do, I want to buy it at one, right? The price is too small, the price is too small. I need, I need a round number for you to understand. All right, now I want to buy it exactly at $1. Now what I'm going to do is I'll put 0 0.8 as my trigger price, which is the stop price. Then in this buy, in this limit, I will put one and amount, maybe I want to buy 100 of this coin, I'll put 100. Total simply means just the total amount of money it will cost me to buy this quantity here. Now, let me explain what I have done here. Pay close attention, please. Pay close attention right now. Now, I this is stop, and I filled in 0 0.8. The current price of this coin is this. This coin is at what? $1.167. And I want to buy this coin using stop limit. And the price at which I want to buy this coin is $1. I want to buy it when it gets to $1. Now, $1 is okay for me because I know if I buy it $1 and it gets to $1.5, I'm already in gain. If it gets to $2, I'm already in gain. Now, what I'm setting is, I'm setting my stop price at 0 0.8, okay? And my limit price, which is the main price I want to buy this coin, at $1. Now, this trigger price, what I did here by putting this 0 0.8 is, I'm telling this exchange that, if this coin starts falling and it gets to 0 0.8, please place order for me to buy this coin at $1. Now you might ask, why did I put a smaller amount? Why don't I buy at this price? It's a simple analogy, okay? If you go to the market and the price of Apple, Apple is selling at 200, at, at 200 Naira per one and you want to buy Apple, okay? Sorry, you get to the market and you are selling Apple. Hmm? You are selling Apple 200 Naira per one. Then somebody came to the market and said, I want to buy Apple at 300 Naira. Please, you will quickly, everybody in that, all of you selling Apple in that market will rush that person that wants to buy one Apple 300 Naira. The reason is because the person is buying higher than the current price. So what I have done here is, if this coin starts falling and get to 0 0.8, please, Binance, place order for me to buy at, 0 .2, at $1. Why I'm putting $1 is, if this coin is at 0 0.8, every seller here will willingly sell coin to me at $1. Why I did it is so that I will not miss the opportunity of buying this coin at $1. The reason why is I have calculated myself and I know that if I should buy this coin at $1, I'm in game. Secondly, is why I'm putting this gap of 0 0.8 to 1 is because cryptocurrency is, is volatile in nature, okay? And it simply means that this coin can easily jump from 0 0.8 back to 1.1 within a tinkle of an eye because crypto is so volatile. So 
for me not to be left out, for the exchange not to jump me, I need to put a price higher than my stop price. This is a trigger price. This is a price at which this coin will get to and my order will enter among this green and red you are seeing. Okay, so if this, if this coin gets to 0 0.8, Binance will place order for me to buy 100 big at $1 and my order will appear in this green and it will execute instantly. The reason is because I'm buying higher than the current price. Now, why am I buying higher than the current price? Because I have known that this coin, if it falls to $1 and I bought it, I bought it at that $1, I'm in gain. That is why I'm buying it like that. Okay, now to be frank with you, I don't use stop limit to buy a coin. I simply use limit to buy a coin. But why I'm giving you this lesson is to fully to understand how stop limit works on the buying section. Now we'll go to selling section. I want you to pay close attention to. We'll go to selling section. Now stop limit has a two names. I repeat, stop limit has two names. On the buying section, stop limit is known as stop limit. But on the selling section, stop limit becomes stop loss. And stop loss is a risk measurement, okay? A risk feature, a risk management feature. Now, pay close attention. Is the same thing, just that buying is the revise of the selling, okay? So now this is stop limit. Remember that when we are in buying, we fixed the stop price to be lower than the current, the price at which I want to buy. Because if I'm buying higher than the current market price, it will quickly execute. Now this is the selling section. Now let's assume I bought this coin at 0 $0.1 per one, okay? and I want to set stop loss. The stop loss I'm setting is to limit my loss. I'm trying to use it and to stop, in case if this coin should start falling, no. I don't want to stay in it again. I want to take out my money because I don't want to lose much. Now, what will I do? I will set my stop loss. How do I set my stop loss? Remember that stop is the trigger price. Stop is the price at which your order will get positioned into the order book for execution. Why limit is the price at which you want to buy or you want to sell? Don't get confused. Now, in stop, I'm setting stop loss. I bought this coin at 0 0.1, or 0 0.16, okay? And I want to set my stop loss. So what I'm going to do is I will put one. When this coin gets $1, please Binance, sell off this coin for me. Sell off this coin for me at 0 0.7. Hmm? Which quantity do I want to sell? I want to sell everything I have. And I place this order. Okay? Anytime you are setting stop loss, eh? Binance will always give you a confirmation message. That is this confirmation. It has said that stop price is $1. Limit price, which is the price at which I want to sell this coin, is at 0 point. Seven dollars and the amount I want to sell is 83. Then I place this order. This order has been created. If I go to the other book, you will see this order here. Now, pay close attention. Let me show you something right here. You will see a trigger condition. You can see this trigger condition is saying greater than or equal to one dollar my order should be placed into this order book. That is what this trigger is saying. He's saying that when this coin continue falling, I purchased this coin at zero at $1.1, okay? And <clears throat> I'm trying to limit my loss. Now, what, I'm, what I have done is I have set stop loss. What I have done is I have said, Binance, please, if this coin did not increase beyond this level and it starts falling. Please, if it fall from this 1.1 down to $1, which is the trigger price, that is why I put $1 here. Place order for me to sell my coin at $0.7. While I put $0.7, if this coin is at $1 and I'm selling $0.7, a lot of 
people will be willing to buy from me, to be willing to buy from me because I'm selling very cheap to compare the current market price. Now they will rush me and buy off my coin and I will be out of the market. So even if this coin then fall to $0.1, I have already removed my money when it, when it got to $0.7 and it has limited my loss. Okay, it has limited my loss entirely. So that is why I put this. Now, why I equally put this is because if this price is close to one, this is crypto, it might jump this price because if maybe this coin fell to $1 and quickly drop to 0 0.8 immediately, and my selling price is at $1 too, it will jump me and I will remain in the market. And I might wake up in the morning and this coin is already at $0.1 and I'll become angry. I'll be like, I set it, I, I, I put, I set stop loss. Then what happened? I'll be like, oh, wow, I, I set stop loss yet. The stop loss did not execute. It did not execute because the price was so close to this trigger price and the price of the commodity quickly jumped this price. So for, for this not to happen to me, I have to distance the selling price from the trigger price. So that is what I have set here. That is why I did it like this. Now, I will show you, I will do calculation with you. This is, I never intended to do it, but I will do it for you this night. I will show you more ways to set a tight stop loss, okay, so that you will make, you will know what you are doing with your stop loss. Meanwhile, for me to do that, I need calculator. So be with me while I get my calculator. Pay close attention, please. If you don't get it at this first time, please, 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 you will watch this video and maybe you will understand it more. Now, I bought this coin at $1.1, okay, 1.16 and Maybe as a trader, I have told myself that I want to just, if uh, worst guest was, I want to just lose 20% of my money, okay? I want to just lose 20% of my money. Now, and I want to set my stop loss so that if this coin is falling, it will, I will not lose more than 20% of my money. And why do I want to lose 20% of my money? Now, as a trader, I'm a risk taker. And I believe that this coin, I might not even lose up to 20% and it will start rising again because sometimes you might buy a coin and it will go down in price before it starts falling. It's equivalent to if you're a driver, if you have a vehicle, sometimes you might start your car, you notice that the car will go back before it starts going front. It's normal. Sometimes you can buy a coin and it will go down first to gather more momentum to boost up and it will fire up. If your stop loss is too tight, it might kick you out of the market. And you will come and find out that a coin you bought at one point something dollars is now at $3. You'll be mad. You'll be like, then why did the stop loss kick you out? The stop loss kick you out because that coin went back more before it continued. So to set a tight stop loss so that it will stand the market pressure, you need some calculations to do. Now that calculation is what I'm going to show you. You bought this coin at... 1.16 dollars okay and you want to lose 20 percent of your money now it simply means that 1.16 1.16 dollars okay no okay let's say you are using 100 dollars to buy this coin all right so you are going to do 100 divided by 1.16 one six, it will give you the quantity of this coin you buy. So it means if you use hundred dollar to buy this coin now, you will get eighty six point two something in this coin. Okay. So now pay close attention. This is the amount you will buy with your hundred dollars. Okay. Let me get a sticky note so that. We'll use it for this lesson. I believe you can see my sticky notes. All right. Now this is my sticky notes and I'm pasting the quantity. I just pasted the quantity $100 will buy for me, okay? At 1.16.
Now you bought this coin at $1.16 per one, and you want to set a stop loss that will make you not to lose more than 20% because you are just willing to lose 20% of your, uh, okay, let me forget you. I want to lose 20% of my trading capital in this coin, which is $20 out of my $100. Now what I'm going to do is, this coin is at 1.16. Now for me to lose 20%, for me to set a stop loss that will make me lose 20%, in case if the coin starts falling, what I'm going to do is the price is 1.16, okay? So I will get 20% of this price, okay? Because I bought this coin at 1.16. So it will now be 1.16 divided by 100, okay? Which is this, times 20. This is the 20% of 1.16. So what I will do is I will simply copy this, okay? I will copy it. I will paste it here again. This is 20% of 1.16. Now what I'm going to do is I will do 1.16 minus this 20%, okay? Which is 0 0.232 equal to this. So it means that if I minus 20% from this price, I'm having this price, which is the 80%, okay? So watch what is going to happen. This is 80% of this price now, which is minusing 20%. So <clears throat> this is the price now. If I do this price times the total quantity we purchased, remember we used $100 to buy this coin times this quantity, okay, times this, you see it's giving me $80. So it has minus 20% from my money. Now, how do I set stop loss with this? Pay close attention. The 80% of this price is 0 0.92, look at it, so that it won't be I'm quoting something else, look at it here. 0 0.928 is the 20% is the 80%. So it simply means that if I sell this coin I bought at 1.16 at 0 0.928, I'm, I'm losing 20%. So what I will do now for my stop loss, I will cancel that. that okay, I have already canceled that trade. Now I'll bring back this calculator. This is the price I want to sell and I want to set stop loss with it. So what I'm going to do now is I will put stop loss of 0. This is 0. what? Okay, this is 0. 0.928. So I'll put stop loss, I'll put my trigger price at 0. 9.95, okay? This is 0 0.95 because 0 0.95 is higher than 0 0.28, 0 0.928. Then my selling price will not be my calculation, 0 0.928, okay? So 0 0.928 and I'm selling total of what I have, okay? If I place this order now, I'm losing 20% from the initial amount of money I use and buy this. Now, the trick is, it's very, very possible that you might not even lose up to 5% and this coin will start rising. So don't, don't say that Don Nelson taught you to use 20%. No, it depends on you. It's an individual choice. Your risk, uh, Ability is different from mine, okay? So I might be ready to lose 20%. You, you might just be ready to lose just 5%. But what matters is you take your calculator and you do the calculation to get the exact stop loss you will set and you will lose that 5%, okay? So that is how to set your stop loss, okay? To be accurate, as an advanced trader, so that when you set your stop loss, you, you can sleep peacefully and tell somebody that you set a stop loss that you cannot lose more than 10% of your initial capital. And why are you doing that? Because in case if this coin starts falling from this price, you bought it. You don't want to lose more than 
that percent you've set it as stop loss. And he's advised as a trader that anytime you buy a coin, you set your stop loss. But if you're an investor, you don't need to set stop loss. Also, sometimes you might decide not to set stop loss at all. But all those decisions is what you will make as you continue trading. Okay, so that is for stop limits. And the last one is OCO. OCO. OCO simply means one cancel the order. Now, pay close attention. A limit order is an advanced market order. A stop limit order is an advanced what? Uh, limit order. While OCO is an advanced stop limit order. So they are all connected and they have different things to do. Okay, so when you come in stop limit in OCO, you can see the field to field became more. Okay, they became like five. So now this is a price and you see stop, you remember stop, you remember stop from stop limit, you remember stop, I believe from here you will understand the only new field that was added is this sell, is this price. Now I bought this coin at 1.16, okay? And I want to sell this coin when it gets to $3, I'll put $3 here, that is OCO for you, pay close attention. I'll put $3 here, then this is the price at which I want to sell this coin. And also I want to set my stop loss, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I will put one here and I will put 0.7, in fact, 0 0.6, let me put 0 0.6. No, 0 0.7 is okay. Let me put 0 0.7 and I want to sell everything I have. Now, I will explain this. Pay close attention. OCO order is known as one cancel the order. This is a kind of order that is two in one. It's a two order. It's a take profit order and a stop loss order. I repeat, OCO order is one cancel one. It's a take profit order and is a stop loss order. What I mean by that is, is an order that if a coin starts rising, it can sell for you and take your profit. If a coin starts falling, it can sell off the coin and remove your money and limit your loss. Now, what I have done here is, I bought this coin at $1.16 and I want to sell this coin when it gets to $3. So I'm putting $3 here. This is the desired price I want to sell. So the price at OCO, this first price you see is the price at which I want to sell. Why this stop is the trigger price for my stop loss. This is the price I'm putting that in case, okay, this three I have put here, it simply means if this coin starts rising from 1.6 and it gets to $3, Binance, please sell off the coin for me. Sell my coin for me when it gets to $3. But I then think again, it's possible that this coin might not even increase. And I'm not saying if this coin starts falling from 1.16 and it gets to $1, Binance, please sell off this coin for me at 0.7. That is what I have set here. And if I place this order, okay? If I place this order, All right, sorry about that. If I place this order now, I will place it. This order has been executed. Now, if you come in the open order section, you can see I'm having two orders. Like I said, this order OCO is one cancel one. All right, so what I have said is, I have simply said that this is my take profit order, which is first, okay? I bought this coin at $1.16 and I want to sell it at $3, which is this. So the first order I set is in this OCO is if this coin starts rising from 1.16 and it gets to $3, Binance, please sell off this coin for me and take my profit. And you can see that is why it's giving me a total of $251 as gain, okay? Because I made gain from here. Then I equally thought, had a second thought, what if this coin don't even increase from this 1.16 and it start falling? Then I have set a stop loss, putting that Binance, if this, in case if this coin starts falling from 1.16 and it gets to $1, which is this trigger price, trigger condition, please place order for me to sell this coin at 0 
And that is why he's giving me $58 because I'm at lost. Why am I at lost? I sold it less than the price I bought it, but yet it's a risk management. It helped me reduce the risk of being in the market and this coin might drop to $0.1. So that is your stop loss and OCO. I open up the window for you to ask questions while we finalize and close. So please, if you have a question, raise up your hand and ask your question. <coughs> Do we have a question in the house? No. <laughs> Esther, good evening, ma. Did you really understand everything we thought? I joined in late, so I, I don't have any question for now. Okay. That is it. I joined, I understood what you explained. Okay, my friend who just raised up your hand, please introduce yourself and ask your question. Yeah, good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Okay, uh, this is our job. Okay. Uh, Thank you very much once again for your for your lecture. My concern is this top limit order. The OCO, yes, is quite understood. And my concern is this uh, uh, stop limit order. I don't know huh? how can one buy a coin at a particular amount. I will be setting a stop limit order of let's just say the, like the example you cite, you cited 20% uh, 20 loss for your initial capital. So does that mean that uh, there will be no profit? Just like the OC owner is quite understood that when the coin rise to $3, you sell off. Then when you fall below uh, fall down to $1, you sell at 0 0.7. That one is quite understood. Then for that stop limit order, you, you buy a coin of uh, maybe a rate of one point uh, one something, and you are setting limit order of uh, uh, twenty percent loss of your capital. So does that mean? I think does that mean there will be no profit in that in that instance? I think there's supposed to be a profit, if at all. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for your question. It means you really observed. Well, now, uh, in everything we do in this life, we, we undergo risk, okay? Now, I will, I, will ask, I, will, I will state this thing for you. Let's assume you were in the office and a neighbor, your neighbor just, put, just give you a call and said that your house is burning. And this house, you build this house with uh, 50 million naira. And this person called you and told you that your house is burning you will quickly leave your working place and start running home. Now, when you got home, the house is burning and you remember that your company's document and your, your, uh, your uh, diploma and degree, everything you've worked for, both land you acquired, is in your wardrobe, okay? And you looked from the window, the fire has not entered that your room, I believe you will quickly rush into that fire to retrieve that document because you know that removing that document alone <laughs> is going to help you recover some certain things. Now, why you forsake a whole 50 million Naira house just to retrieve a document you had inside? That is equivalent to this. You bought a coin at $100 and unfortunately the coin started dropping in price is not advisable that you remain in the market as a trader you've seen that this coin is dropping drastically and you know that at that moment at that moment you don't want to lose more than that amount okay you cannot say that it's better you remove so so amount of money rather than losing more than that or losing higher than that so that is the reason why for stop loss. And stop loss comes in handy 
as a trader at every time. I want you to understand that once the same thing happens even in your real business, as a business owner, you must run into losses. Talk more of a financial market, okay? So if the stop loss is a kind of, you've analyzed this coin, done your technical analysis, done your fundamental analysis, do everything and you are like, this coin will get to what? $5 or $3 and you want to buy it and now that it's still one point something dollars. But now the reverse is the case. The coin is going down. You wouldn't be there and your money keeps sinking. So the stop loss is a way to retrieve some part of that money that you've lost. Okay? So that is why the stop loss, in fact, it's just risk management to limit your risk. Like I told you, you can decide the percentage you want to risk. Okay? So it's like that in every business and everything we do in life. So that is why you are not in gain in stop loss. Rather, stop loss is a, is a savior. Uh, you won't understand until you trade very well. If you trade frequently, you will come to like stop loss. So, sir, that is why stop loss is, is that way. I don't know if your question is being answered. So, even if the reverse is the case, let's say you buy the, 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 the coin for, a, for $1, the coin is rising above $1, and you've already set your stop loss, you will not be able to sell it. If the coin starts increasing, okay, remember, stop loss is advanced limit order. Your conditions must be met. If the coin starts increasing, the stop loss will never execute till it gets to that price. So it means that that stop loss I set here at zero point at one, uh, at a trigger price of one, and the condition is, in fact, the simple thing to do is to reset it, okay? I believe with that, we can understand what we are doing. So let me quickly set a stop loss. I need to cancel this OCO. Then I bought this coin now at 1.16. Uh, now I'm setting my stop loss. The trigger price is one and I want to sell at 0 0.7, okay? 0 0.7 and I want to sell everything and I place this order. Okay, normally it will give you that confirmation page. You confirm. If you come here now, you will see that the stop loss is here. This is my trigger price, which is $1. And this is my selling price. Now, if this coin starts increasing to 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 1.4, 1 1.5, $2, dollar, this thing will never execute. This stop loss will never execute. Now, what I even need to do as a trader is I will now use this stop loss to protect the gain I have made so far. So what I'm going to do is I will cancel this stop loss and reset it again, meeting the current price of this month, of this coin. So that it, it, because if this coin has reached 1.5, I might not be okay. I have made some gain. In case if I'm not in the market and this coin starts dropping, I don't want to lose some little gain I have made or even lose my capital. So what I'm going to do is I will cancel this and I will now make my trigger price maybe 1.3 and make my selling price 1.2. So you can see that my stop loss is coming up. If this coin gets to $5, the same way I come and cancel this and I continue setting. But the game here is to use this and limit your loss. That is the primary game. So stop loss is adjustable at any time. I don't know if I answered your question, sir. Thank you very, very much. But in fact, this later, this, this latter uh, explanation uh, just gives me joy right now, honestly. Because I was wondering, how can one purpose of us being in the business is to is to make profit. So, if it is possible to seek cancel the stop loss and reset it against the present price, thumbs up. That is good. Thank you very much. All right. I probably want you to understand that the stop loss will never execute till it gets to it its conditions. So even if you don't adjust this, okay, maybe you set this now that you bought this coin and the price continue increasing, okay, and you did not adjust it, this will never execute. It will just be lying here unless if these conditions are met. 
Then another thing I need to point out to every one of you is that your stop loss, this trigger price, okay, let me cancel it and show you, I believe in practicals. This trigger price must be less than the current market price. That is stop loss for you. So if I put $2 here, if I put $2 here, okay, and put $1 here, maybe I want to sell everything, okay? This other is placed, okay? But this is very, very wrong. It will never get executed. The reason why it will not get executed and is even dangerous, <laughs> why I'm saying this now is, if you are doing this and you think you are setting stop loss, you did not set any stop loss. What you just did is you just set some, I don't know what I'll call it because this price here, the trigger price is even higher than this. So it simply means that if this coin start going down from 1.16, you are still in the market and you might wake up and jam this coin at $0.1. Why you, you, you said it to yourself that you set your what stop loss. So for your stop loss to work effectively, please, the trigger price needs to be less than the current market price at all time. You need to be less than the current market price. Here you can put 0 0.9, okay? There is no, uh, there is no argument in that. If you want self, you can put one, but the game is you putting one here expose you to the risk of getting jumped because the crypto space is so volatile. This coin can drop from one point, this one point you are seeing to 0 0.9 instantly. And if that happens, it has jumped you entirely. Even this trigger price will not work. The reason is because the limit price you are selling is higher than the current price and the exchange jumped you and you will remain in the market. Imagine if it jump you and start dropping to a drop to 0 0.1, you're already in heavy loss. So I don't know, do we have any other question? Any other question? Um, please, where can we get this uh, stop loss and all these things? Where did you get the... Is it once you click on sell that you will be able to set this stop loss and all these things? Okay, like you said, you joined us late. I explained stop loss on the buying section and I equally explained it on the selling section. Okay, so okay. the easiest way for you to get it is, let me go to Binance homepage. Okay. Now, when you log into Binance, okay, you come to trade. Okay. I normally use advanced, but you can use classic. Is they are all the same, it's just your choice. Okay, so when you come here, then you can see where is written limit, is written market automatically, they will always select limit for you because it gives you option to beat. Then you see market and you see stop loss. So when you okay. click on stop loss, you have option to set your stop loss. Okay, sir. Thank so you. that is how you set your stop loss. Okay, thank you. So any other question? If you still have a question, please unmute yourself and ask. Okay, uh, this stop loss uh, order, is it, is it for long term, is it good for somebody who wants to invest as a long term business or the short term? Okay, um, if, if you are investing and you know you are going to be holding a coin for like three, four, five months, you don't need stop loss because stop loss might kick you out. Example is I bought big. I bought this coin. This coin I have here now is some part of the coin. I bought this coin when this coin was at $1.4. Okay. And you can see that this coin has dropped, big dropped to 1.1. Now, if I set stop loss, it will kick me out of the market. Okay. While my desired profit target is yet to be met as an investor because my profit target might be met along the line, maybe after two, three weeks, or after one month, after two months, okay? And it will kick me out. So if you are holding a coin for a long term, for a long term, uh, for long term sake, you leave stop loss, okay? But if you are trading a coin that maybe within one week you want to sell off, you can just leave you can just set your stop loss. 
But it's advisable that as you trade on short term, you practice stop loss so that it will become part of you because what you do constantly becomes part of you. So that is how stop loss functions. So big, I'm not setting stop loss on big because I'm holding big for a long term. I might hold big, I have up to 1000 plus big. I might hold big till up to next year. So I'm not setting any stop loss on it. I don't know if that answers your question. Yes, yes sir, thank you. Okay. I think we have come to the end of our meeting. And um, please, 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 please. If you are interested in enrolling in an advanced course, uh, where is the 20% discount will last for seven days from today. Okay, today is my last major uh, classes with you. Other webinars you might join with me might not be on this basic. It might be on other aspect entirely. And I don't expect you to be a novice there. So for you not to be a novice in some of my webinars, you might join again. Try and watch these videos if you did not join us from beginning. Okay, so the course will be for $30 from now to the next Saturday. And you can get across to this course. You can enroll through Mr. Manuel. Okay, you chat him up. He will give you the direction on how to enroll. So that is how it is okay so i hope to see you all next and i want you to start trading okay start trading if you have 20 dollars if you have 100 dollars start trading the little capital you have you can turn it over to a huge amount your ability to grow 100 dollars to 1000 dollars is a very nice like what you have acquired money cannot buy it because it means that if somebody should give you hundred thousand dollars you can grow it to one million dollars it means that if you had hundred thousand dollars and it dropped to one thousand dollars you can grow it back to that hundred thousand dollars that is an ability as a trader and you get to develop that along the line so from today i might be dropping some signals sometimes in a group because i believe you can now buy and sell so you don't need technical analysis in my signals. All you need to do is you just do what? Place order and take your profits, okay? Then <clears throat> if you want to get constant signals, you need to enroll in the course. I don't run signal separately, okay? I don't tell you to subscribe to a signal channel, no. Because giving you a signal without proper uh, knowledge is a time bomb <laughs> and is, is, is harming you more than you can think of. So please, if you are ready to enroll, meet Mr. Emmanuel, he will guide you and you enroll. Then any day you see me drop a buy signal in your group and you have money in your Binance account, I believe you can buy now, try and buy and make some little gain at least so that you see that what we have been saying since is not just and boost story so that you see it live and direct. Some of my students made no less than 200, 300, 1000 dollars, depending on their trading capital this week that is ending a loan. So I wouldn't want you to be left out, okay? Whether you, you enroll in the course or not, the only thing that you'll be limited is the signal I will be dropping in the group might be limited, okay? Because I focus more on the signal room and the paid classes because it's equally uh, unjust for me to add it to a signal room where people paid for it also. So you will continue seeing me one on one. I will always do webinar and you're always invited. I will always drop a link for you to join. And I want you to keep the fire burning. <laughs> you don't need to stop, okay? If you are not getting it now, continue learning Try following up with the webinar and with time, you will become very nice. Secondly, you need to practice. The more you practice, the more you master the market. In fact, the simple truth is the market is the best teacher. The market will teach you what I, for one, will not teach you. Okay? So that is what I want you to do. Then I don't know. I once told you that in my next webinar, I will tell you why time more is a Ponzi scheme. Time All is a high yield investment program. I did Time All. I had a VIP, even up to VIP six, okay? 
but time war is a ponzi scheme time war has a product okay they tell you they have a product but the simple truth is half of those products they have they tell you they have they don't even sell real products so what they pay you majorly they just create few products and they ship even the free product they say they will give you when you register some of us has not seen that real product okay so what they do is they are paying you with the money people are bringing into the system. And that is why when people buy past time all, by doing P2P uh, selling of time points, it affected time all a lot. They have no, no other uh, option than to restart that system. What time all did by introducing VIP7 is a restart. They restarted that system because they know that if they cop the rate at which people GH, at uh, sorry, at which people withdraw, it will have that system last longer. And secondly, because it's a hybrid hype, is we, we call it hybrid, is a hybrid hype well crafted to last for a very long time. They made it in a way that what you are earning in time one is very, very small. If you calculate the percentage you earn with your capital, you will know that. You are not even making up to 60% from time on, apart from your referral bonus. Forget referral bonuses. Okay. So that is why I told you that time on is that is crypto is far better than time on because in crypto, as I have this bake now, highest bake will drop my money to maybe 50%, but I can get it at any time. Let me see my, my younger ones or my family, they need urgent money and I run out of money. I can easily sell off this big and sort out myself. But in time more, you cannot. Money you have deposited is not up to 10 days. You cannot do anything. And what it means is if that 10 days is yet to reach and that system crash, your money is gone. So that is it. Forget the issue of being registered company or not registered company, okay? And one bad something about all this system is they block your mind and they give you this uh, mindset of quick, quick money, less work, and you wouldn't know what is going on around you. You'll be so used to it. It took me time to come out from influence of all these systems. So you will get to understand that letter. There is nothing in this life that is like you having control of your money. Okay, you having money and this thing you purchased, just like you buying a land now, okay? The land is your property. Highest, it drops in price. But anytime you need that money back, you can get your money back. So that is it. And you should know better. And don't fall victim to all these systems. If you are doing it, you do it with full awareness and intelligence of what you are doing, okay? So I will advise you invest in crypto and pay close attention to crypto. Crypto is the greatest opportunity our generation has ever had, okay? Like I, like I said, $10, $10 invested in crypto for seven years, for the last seven years, will be giving you, will, must have cost you $3,600 and something dollars. But that $3,600 and something dollars has been multiplied to $200 and something thousand dollars. $100,000 is around 48 million Naira, okay? So $200,000 will be giving you almost 80 something or 90 something million. Then imagine if Chimo can give you that. So I want you to start looking beyond today and start looking at tomorrow, next tomorrow. So crypto can give you that. Worst case scenario is you don't have time to trade, your work is this and that. My brother, my sister, every month remove small money and buy a stable coin you have analyzed and keep i bet you that in the next three months you might call me and appreciate this particular word i just said today so that comes to the end of this meeting and i really appreciate you all <laughs> i love to have stayed with you more but i have another meeting now so see you all and have a wonderful day bye all right, thank you very much.